now. Try setting fire to biofuel on a commercial flight and you'd probably get taken in by Homeland Security. But try the same thing on a jet simulating the weightlessness of space and it's called science. I'm very shocked actually that they let us do this. And every time I've talked to anyone, they've always said uh, like, you're actually blowing something up on a plane. Like, what are you doing? Sam Avery led a team of UCSD engineering majors who wanted to see how biofuels burn when gravity is taken out of the equation. They got to pull off their firebug study thanks to NASA's Microgravity University. NASA chose seven undergrad teams to conduct research on a microgravity flight earlier this month. Avery and his teammates built their experiment on the research of UCSD professor Foreman Williams. They say taking his work into microgravity could one day help improve fire extinguishers on the International Space Station. And it could have applications here on Earth, too. Because then you can go back to, say, an engine on the ground that uses biofuels, and then you can improve how it burns biofuels and improve efficiency. The UCSD microgravity team had to build a triple contained box in order to convince NASA that their combustible experiment was safe. This was uh, completely programmed and, and the structure was built by uh, undergraduate um, students. Nico Montoya explains how their burn chamber works. So the needle's coming in to push a droplet onto the cross fiber. So then we'll drop down another motor to drop a spark on it, and it'll ignite. Fire. There it is. All this had to happen in less than 20 seconds, the duration of each weightless period on their microgravity flight. Avery and two other UCSD students boarded a jet that soars and dives through a series of steep arcs, kind of like a microgravity roller coaster. Avery says that at first, the weightlessness feels exactly like the peak of an amusement park ride. But then... The moment you're gone from that peak, it's very different. Wherever you pushed off from, you will keep going in that direction no matter what you do. You can spin yourself, but... You'll just keep floating until you hit something. When the jet reached the lowest point in its descent, passengers would go through a period of double gravity. You just press down and you can feel your face droop and everything like that. Um, I did a sit up in it and it's really hard. <laughs> just like roller coasters, these flights can give some passengers a mean bout of motion sickness. After all, Vomit Comet is the jet's unofficial nickname. Denisha Kenyon, one of the three UCSD flyers, succumbed to nausea. Our friend was back there just vomiting into a bag. <laughs> but even illness could not prevent the intrepid UCSD team from successfully carrying out its biofuel burn. Once they started floating, they ignited a droplet of butanol inside their specially designed box and filmed the results. Being able to ignite that flame and being able to see the effects of microgravity on the flame we're combusting, on the fuel, um, that was definitely a success. Avery says experiencing microgravity was awesome, but he's also glad he and his teammates got to do some serious work up there. Just like they predicted, the flame changed shape without gravity to weigh it down. The flame expands dramatically um, and becomes more of a perfect sphere. Um, so it just has this large globule shape. And if there's any flow going across the flame, then it creates a kind of uh, kind of like a teardrop, but more of just like a morphing blob that just kind of moves around with any, any movement of gravity. Poor weather prevented them from taking a second flight, but the team is already hoping to return to NASA's Microgravity University for more weightless experiments next year. David Wagner, KPBS News.